Hi, this is Scott, Kilo Sierra 6, Delta Alpha Yankee, and for today's video, I'm taking a bit of a break from the material I've been talking about recently. Uh, I will get back to it shortly, but I wanted to toss in a little bit of variety, uh, make things interesting for both you and for me. Uh, and I wanted very specifically to get on this subject because it's one I get asked about a lot, and I haven't really talked about it very much. And what that is, and what the subject of today's, today's video is, and actually it's going to have a couple of follow-on videos that are going to spawn off of this, but that question is, what role, if any, does digital mode have in emergency communications? Now, I guess in order to effectively answer that question, I'm going to have to ask a question, and that would be, what does the term MCOM mean to you? Because MCOM is a, a pretty vast umbrella term that covers a lot of different unconventional usages of amateur radio. In general, it's directed towards operating radios under emergency conditions, but again, those, those what you consider an emergency may be different than what someone else considers an emergency, and it can, it can span the spectrum from, uh, and the first group being the largest, um, and that's what we're going to talk about today will be uh, the group wherein emergency communications is more of an organized uh, group affiliated activity that's usually connected to a, either a radio club or it's connected to a, an organization within your community such as Red Cross. And this would be uh, usages for things like amateur radio emergency services, ARIES, um, Skywarn, and supportive search and rescue activities. In those cases, because it is a more structured, formalized activity, uh, and it involves a lot of parties that there's really been not a lot of um, pre-coordination in terms of radios that are going to be used. Uh, for that to work effectively, you have to default to the most common communication standard that everyone is going to possess. And for that activity, it's going to be analog. And it's going to be analog for quite a long time. Um, as for the other usages of, of emergency radio communications, things like you know preparedness groups, mutual aid groups, things like that, um, I will talk about that in a separate video because otherwise it tends to muddy the waters if it mix the two together. So look for a video to follow talking about that side of MCOM. But for today, we're going to be talking about those organized, structured activities and what role digital has in that. And as I mentioned, your communication standard is going to be analog because with that mode, you can pretty much surmise that anyone that shows up with an amateur radio, um, and for this purpose, everybody kind of knows that the uh, the main mode of or the mode of communication is going to be either two meter or seventy centimeter UHF VHF handhelds are going to be pretty prevalent, um, and analog is going to be the standard. Now, whether you show up with an with a digital mode radio or not. All of these radios, although they possess a, di a digital mode, they are all in and of themselves excellent analog radios as well. So that standard is covered within each of these radios. In fact, I'm not aware of any amateur radios being marketed that are strictly digital mode and no analog at all. They pretty much all have analog built into it. Um, and then thus, that also covers the people that show up with radios that have no digital mode whatsoever. Radios such as the Yaesu FT60, the VX6R, the FT65. None of those radios have digital mode. Um, so, like I said, analog is going to be your standard. So, digital really isn't required. Uh, I'm not saying it's not helpful, and I'm not saying you shouldn't have a digital mode at all. It doesn't hurt. There are a couple of little things that you can do with it on the side. They're kind of more supportive activities. But in terms of being able to go out there and work an Aries call out or a Skywarn or something like that, um, any radio that has analog capability is fine. If it's, again, if it's got digital, a couple of little things you can do with that. And really about the only useful feature that, that I could think would be if you know, if you are responding to something like an Aries call or a search and rescue, the news media might be there. Uh, there might be some people listening in, usually via a scanner. And scanners, even the cheapest scanners, will pick up analog signals within the, the range of frequencies that we use in amateur. They'll pick those up just fine. Now, this is where I want to see the comments section kind of spring into play because the comments section on this channel is pretty awesome. I learn something new from pretty much every video I put out, so I'm going to throw this one out there. Is anyone aware of a scanner 
a commercially available scanner, not a radio, but just a scanner, a kind of thing that a news person might own. Does anyone know of one of those that will decode and receive, well, it'll receive, but will it decode a DMR, a D-Star, or a Yaesu System Fusion signal? Uh, and those are the three kind of hobby-grade digital modes, although they have commercial applications as well. And then, of course, the fourth being P25 Phase 1 and Phase 2. So those are the four modes that are sanctioned for use on amateur radio. Now, of course, there are, there are scanners out there that will decipher uh, Phase 1 and Phase 2 P25 because that's largely used in the public safety community amongst fire and police. So a lot of your, your news professionals will have professional... <laughs> I can't believe I said the word news professional. I never met one that's professional. Um, I guess they're employed in the profession, so they. I guess they earn the term, but it's not... Oh, enough of that. But... Um, They'll get, they'll, they have scanners that'll do P25 phase one and phase two, but DMR, D star, and, and uh, C4FM. If there's a scanner out there that'll do that, I would love to hear about it. Um, but one purpose or one use for digital modes that you might have if you're working one of these activations is if you need to set up kind of a, a little bit of privacy uh, for, for a back channel frequency. Uh, let's say you want to transmit some information that, you know, it's not a state secret, but you want to keep it kind of on the, on the down low. Um, a couple of radio operators, if they have matched radios, in other words, if they've got DMR, D-Star, or C4FM, uh, they could set up a simplex channel and communicate digitally, and anyone monitoring that on a scanner will just hear coded uh, static. They, they will not be able to decipher the communication. And that can be sort of a good thing. It's not encryption because anyone with a uh, with a digital mode capable radio can pick up the signal. We're not talking encryption here. And this is a this is a technique called security through obscurity. And I didn't coin the term. The term actually comes from a, a YouTube channel called K6UDA. It's a guy named Bob. He's a, a former cop as well. And it's an excellent channel. I highly recommend it. But a couple of years ago, I saw a video he did where he was talking about one of the Yaesu radios. And sort of explaining how transmitting in that digital mode, if you have other people that you, you know, you don't, you don't really want to play with them, you don't, you don't want them hearing what you're at, you have to say, or you just want to keep it between you and another radio operator without being uh, interrupted, uh, you can switch to a digital mode and other people on the channel that are util utilizing analog all the time radios, uh, they're not going to be able to hear what you're saying. So it's a, it's a layer of privacy. It's not necessarily encryption. But in terms of, you know, keeping it, keeping your information out of the hands of the media or people that you don't want to hear, uh, it's, it's something. That's about the only potential use I can see for digital. It's otherwise going to be, as I said, pretty much not a thing and not necessarily required for, again, that formal, organized, airy, skyworn, SAR type work. Um, and, but of course, like I said, these are all excellent analog radios in and of themselves outside of their digital mode, and it can't hurt to have the extra mode. Now, as I alluded uh, in a subsequent video, I'm going to talk about where these radios really come into play for emergency communications is in terms of a, a formal group that you form, whether it's a mutual assistance group or a prepper group or whatever, and working kind of exclusively from the digital mode um, and you can really avail yourself of that uh, security through obscurity. And then there's also some other things that these analog radios will do that's kind of interesting, kind of super illegal, but it would depend on the circumstances. And I'm going to show you some legal ways of getting around that where you can uh, actually start bringing encryption and some other things into it. Uh, but I'm going to focus on doing that legally versus illegally. How about that? But uh, that's kind of all I wanted to talk about. Like I said, just to sum it up. Um, digital isn't, uh, isn't necessarily required, but it can't hurt. And usually the radios that are associated with the digital mode are fantastic radios in and of themselves and analog. So, you know, don't, uh, don't be shy about getting a radio like that. You can still run analog and still go out there and do that stuff. So with that, I'll go ahead and bring it to a close. I'll talk long enough on this. And in the next video, I'll talk about, you know, we'll dig a little bit deeper into digital and some of the capabilities. So thank you for listening. Have a great day. This is Kilo Sierra 6, Delta Alpha Yankee, Scott in Southwest Visalia, California. Have a wonderful day.